Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Now if you're new, we do movie and series reviews and monthly wrap-up tier lists. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, consider hitting that subscribe button. So this is actually my second time filming this video, which sucks because these are the longer videos that I do. And I don't know what happened to it about midway through the video. It just like corrupted and I... I'm not tech savvy, so I don't know how to save things. So here we are again, and let's get on with ranking all the movies that I saw in the month of February. Of course, all the new releases that I saw in the month of February. As always, anything that I did review within that month will be down below if you want more of my take on each individual um, uh, movie. And we're going to try to get, go through this uh, quicker just because it is my second time <laughs> Second time going through it and and I don't think I'll linger as much. Let's hope so. First up would be Cycles. This is a prime original movie. It is a low budget kind of indie movie. And it is set in one location and we do only have um, two characters, the younger brother and the older brother. And basically it's just a movie about life, about figuring out who you are. This is the director's like first official like big movie. Again, it's on Amazon Prime. So if you would like to give the underdog a chance, I say go ahead and give it a watch. I think it was just an okay movie, especially being the first, uh, being his first official film. We're gonna go ahead and move on to Netflix. And this is Ali Wong's, Dong Wong's comedy special. I think I have seen one of her other comedy specials. I think so. I can't really remember. I think I like her better in the movies. I'm not particularly fond of her comedy specials. This one was just okay. It did make me laugh a bit here and there. Very, very raunchy, you guys. Very, very raunchy, which I have no problem with raunchy stuff. Up next would be Marry Me. This is a movie that is currently in theaters and you can also catch it on Peacock. I actually opted to just watch it at home and it does star Jennifer Lopez, Owen Wilson, Maluma. I believe this is Maluma's like first official uh, movie. I, I know he did voice a character in Encanto, but as far as where you can actually see him, you can see him here. I'm not like a big Maluma fan. I don't really listen to that type of music, but I just wanted to share that information for the Maluma fans out there. Of course, we know and we love Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson's like early 2000s, 2010s romantic movies. I don't feel like this really brought anything new to the genre. I feel like they themselves have even done better romantic comedy movies like The Wedding Planner, um, Midnight in Paris. I'm really a fan of the music either. I'm good with the one watch and we're gonna just go ahead and move on. Oh, actually I guess before moving on, it was also an okay movie. Yeah, it was decent enough. Uh, with that, we're gonna move um, on over back to Prime Video with I Want You Back. Now this does star Jenny Slade, Charlie Day, Scott Eastwood, who is uh, of course Clint Eastwood's son, and Gina Rodriguez. And this is basically about these two couples who got dumped, Charlie Day and Jenny Slade. And they are just wanting their significant other back. Charlie and Jenny actually work in the same office and they end up uh, meeting not the same office, in the same office building. And they actually end up meeting in the stairway while they're both crying about, you know, the lo the loss of their, of their other person, of their boyfriend and their girlfriend. And they end up plotting this scheme of, you know what, we're going to help each other to get these people back. And it's actually pretty funny. I feel like it's more of a romantic comedy movie for adults more than for the younger people. I think it's very not cheesy factor <laughs> like it's still cheesy but i don't feel it's as cheesy i thought it was a really really enjoyable romantic movie this is one that i can see myself rewatching. one that i would uh recommend to people so we're gonna go ahead and move on to uh the book of love which is also on amazon prime i think it was also just an enjoyable movie now this does star sam claffin and veronica echiquia echiqui I don't know, you guys, you already know how I am with names. I swear I need to take like some sort of like name pronunciation class deal. But you know what? That's just kind of who I am. Yeah, yeah, I probably can't pronounce people's names either. Yeah, probably don't have as much trouble as I do, but it is what it is. So this is about a British writer, Sam's character, who wrote this very, very dull book, as in there is no naughty stuff happening. Veronica has taken upon herself to better this book. She is the translator of this very dull book, but she said, you know what? It's a dull book. She knew what she had and she took it upon herself to make it 
very, 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 very naughty, naughty book. Moving on to HBO Max, and this is a Kimmy. This does star Zoe Kravitz, and this one actually is taking place within the current pandemic state. Um, now, Kimmy is like the new version of like Siri, Google, Alexa. Zoe Kravitz character is working for the company of Kimmy, and she is like basically like listening in on the devices to kind of better suit the commands. Well, she ends up hearing a crime taking place. And now Kimmy is on the run trying to expose the crime, trying to also survive this day or these days. Oh, I think it was a day. Might have been a couple more days. I thought it was also enjoyable. You know what? We'll put it on the front end of enjoyable because it was definitely better than the other romantic comics. I mean, this isn't like a romantic movie, but there is this ending of the movie that made her really really a badass moving on to death on the nile this is like not really a sequel but like a continuation of murder on the oriental express um same thing like that is very very star stunned we are out on the nile celebrating gal gadot and army hammers um newfound love and marriage and of course there is a death on the Nile. Now just like Murder on the Oriental Express, I really wasn't a fan of this movie so I'm just gonna say it was an okay film. Definitely like it better than Murder on the Oriental Express. I really found that one to be a little bit more boring. But we're gonna just move on to um, Uncharted which is another mo movie that's just in theaters. It's, it's based on the game Uncharted. Uncharted? Uncharted. I don't know whatever it is. I have not oh no actually I did play it once. I attempted to play it. I played it for like 10 minutes 15 minutes tops. I don't ask me which one it was. I think there's multiple ones but I don't even know you guys. I just remember like going I think I was like in a cave. I don't know you guys it was so long ago and I'm just like roaming around looking up looking next. I don't know how to play games and I never came across anything. I'm assuming I probably needed to find some sort of object. I don't know. I feel like I was stuck in this place and I never could get out. Maybe I needed to jump up high. I gave up on it you guys. Anywho this does star um Mark Wahlberg and um Peter Parker <laughs> no uh Tom Holland he's so cute but it, you pretty much get Peter Parker at the end of the day well you get Spider-Man Mark Wahlberg at the end I feel like he also just plays himself like in multiple like kind of like Ryan Reynolds it's like the same character it's a nice little adventure I had fun with it I I have heard sorry if I can talk I have heard some pretty negative comments on it but I feel like that comes more from people who have played the game the biggest thing is that it definitely is miscast, which I will agree with. I mean, at the end of the day, I thought it was a pretty enjoyable movie, I guess, as a whole. Finally would be No Exit, which, believe it or not, was one of my anticipated movies of 2022, just because I absolutely love the book. The book is fantastic. It's such a thriller. I guess you could say I went in there with a disadvantage because I already knew who the um, killer was. I already knew the twists and turns. For the most part it stayed pretty true to the book but they did change a couple things here and there. One of the big things that I will say that really doesn't have much to give away is the women's bathroom and this ding dong window you guys. Yeah I just have no idea how much of importance this window is in the book. For some reason or another they decided to change the whole bathroom scene in the movie but just know that in the book that window is like a pain in the ass for the antagonist that person absolutely hates it but i wasn't really totally here for all the actors that were portraying that's definitely not how i envisioned them especially the antagonist definitely needed to be a little bit more like scarier buffier looking at the end of the day even though they did change a lot of stuff with it i still enjoyed myself all right so this is all the movies that i saw this month we didn't have anything totally terrible but we definitely didn't have any winners in the month of february but we are still early on of course march which is actually when i'm filming this we do have the batman which i have seen already you can check out that uh review let me know down below what did you guys watch did we watch any of the, uh, the same things do you agree did you disagree if you disagree it's totally fine you know that's the the beauty of movies you know we all have our own opinions on things um but of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new and until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.